Welcome to week four on dementia prevention. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Lee. Welcome to Talking With Docs. Welcome to talk. Is it bad that I can't remember what weeks one, two, and three were for dementia prevention? <laughs> it's kind of bad, but let's quickly go through education, right. hearing, mm -hmm. hypertension. Those were three big modifiable risk factors yes. that you can modify to minimize your chance of developing dementia. But today, we've got a doozy. <laughs> this is Say it. Oh, you say it. Probably the most modifiable risk factor to prevent. Just tell me it's not eggs, because that got people fired up last okay, week. Okay, we're not talking about <laughs> eggs. We are talking about smoking. Okay. And Do people still smoke? Yeah, yeah. an alarming number, actually. Okay. And smoking, we're, we're mostly talking about cigarettes, uh -huh. but also there are some implications for people that vape as a way to not oh, smoke. Oh, okay. And maybe even cannabis use, we're not sure. Look at you. Weed. Weed. All yes. Right. Okay. So, so obviously, most people know that smoking is bad for you. That has been proven in the literature. I think okay. unequivocally, right. right? It's bad for your lungs, it's bad for your heart. Someone out there is gonna leave a comment that they had. My it. grandpa smoked three packs a day for 80 yeah, years and he fine. lived to be 96. That's fine, that's fine. But for the average person, smoking will end your life. Imagine me wearing a shirt that says, your anecdote is not evidence. <laughs> Do they have shirts like that? There actually that's, is a shirt, and I might get one because I feel like I can just take a picture of it and send it to some of the comments. Okay. okay. All right. So we know smoking is bad for us in right. many ways, but now specifically yes. on development of dementia, there's really three main ways that smoking plays a role here. Yes. Right? It's got its oxidative stress, its inflammation, and its vascular damage. Right. And to the point where they estimate that smoking doubles your risk. And there was one large cohort study that showed that smoking increases your risk of Alzheimer's by 44% mm -hmm. and all-cause dementia 29%. Like, these are big numbers. That's a lot of dementia attributable to smoking. Yes. But the good news is, if you quit, there's still hope. Hey. So don't, don't give up hope. Okay, right. so let's start at the beginning. Never give so, up hope. mechanisms of damage caused by smoking. So, we're going to talk about oxidative stress. So, oxidative stress is when those reactive oxygen species do damage in our body. And we've talked about antioxidants. Yes. Whenever you hear something's good for you, often they'll say, oh, it's an antioxidant. It's a natural antioxidant. It's an antioxidant. Right. Well, smoking's the opposite. Right. It creates, generates free radicals that do damage to, to our lipids, to our proteins, and even to our DNA that causes DNA to die and our neurons to die and not be able to regenerate possibly. We already know that our brains aren't really very good at that already, so it increases this damage. There is some plasticity to the brain, but yes. it's not as good as other tissues in the body. So the free radicals, like you were in high school, a free radical protesting all over the place, um, that, that, causes, that inhibits your brain's ability to heal. Yes, so that's number one, <laughs> oxidative stress. And we, and we talk about this, it has general negative health consequences throughout our bodies, but specifically in the brain, this increases your chances of getting Alzheimer's and dementia. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two, it's like, <clears throat> it's like they are kind of yin and yang, yeah. they always go together. We always talk about inflammation, that's yes. a buzz topic now, it's yes. inflammatory. Inflammation is being implicated in so many disease processes, from coronary artery disease, for example. Everyone's talking about inflammation as being bad for you now. Yep. And now that is one of the mechanisms by which smoking can increase your chance of dementia and Alzheimer's by just causing a chronic inflammation in the brain. Right, and, and how I like to think of it, a lot of people are like, well, inflammation, isn't it normal? Like we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. I think of it kind of like the fire department showing up at a fire. Okay. So inflammation's okay, they come, they start to put out the fire. But chronic inflammation is like the fire department just stayed there, kept the hoses on the whole time on your house. Right. Eventually, the basement's flooded. Water damage. There's chronic water damage. And that's what happens is our bodies get overwhelmed. And particularly in the brain, there are these cells called microglia that are mm -hmm. kind of responsible, little immune, resident immune cells. Mm -hmm. And they get overwhelmed. They're the, they're the little firemen. They're the little firemen. Okay. Yeah, and then they get, they get overwhelmed, they mm -hmm. fall to the ground, the hose is still on, Mm -hmm. Damage keeps going. And this can lead to formation of things like amyloid plaques and tau tangles yeah. that are specifically implicated in Alzheimer's disease or signs of Alzheimer's disease and prevent neurons from talking to each other. So that's cell to cell communication. And you're not going to find a microglia calendar anytime soon in your <laughs> store. No. no like the not. fireman calendar. Yeah, yeah. No, Did I, you get that? I got that. Yeah. Come on, Weren't you Mr. November once? <laughs> Mr. November of the microglia calendar, maybe. <laughs> okay, number three. Vascular damage, this like, is the so classic harsh. smoking. This is the first thing that comes to mind when I think of smoking is microvascular damage. Yes. And we think of this a lot because when we're performing surgery, if someone is a smoker, we know that the wound's not gonna heal as well, the chance of infection is gonna go up because of the damage to the microvasculature. Right. 
in the brain, damage to the microvasculature can lead to Alzheimer's dementia and even vascular dementia or all-cause dementia. Yes, and this is by a bunch of different mechanisms. So first, like the increasing your heart rate and your blood pressure that nicotine does, that can do endothelial damage. Um, the nicotine itself actually has ability to increase <clears throat> plaque formation inside of your vessels, not to mention the carbon monoxide, the reduction in nitric oxide. There's a, there's a, a large number of reasons that damage to those vessels. You need blood flow in the brain. You need blood flow in the brain. And this will increase your risk <clears throat> of small strokes, which also can lead to right. Right. Multi, decline and multi-infarct dementia, yeah. for example. So number four is, is kind of related to all these things, but it's, it's actually the neurotransmitter side mm. of things. So when you in, ingest nicotine, it increases your dopamine. It, this is what, part of what gives you pleasure. Right. So dopamine gets overwhelmed. Serotonin, so this is involved in mood regulation. This is altered by nicotine. And then the nicotine itself actually um, messes up acetylcholine, which is another communication system between cells that can be damaged. And the last one is glutamate. So glutamate is an excitatory molecule. And when your neurons are constantly excited, they actually fail faster and they can even die. This leads to cognitive decline. So you're obstructing the normal functions of the brain. And, and those, it's not surprising, those right? neurotransmitters is probably, like you said, with the dopamine exam example, it's probably why it's so hard to quit. 100%. All right, so there's four mechanisms by which smoking leads to dementia, yes. okay? It's, and now, you had mentioned this earlier. Is that it? You smoke, you're done, give it up. You had a cigarette when you were in grade nine? So, no. Okay. And, yeah, and lots of people have mm -hmm. cigarettes when they're in grade nine. Well. Not everybody. No. Probably not you. Oh. I, I did, so when I was a kid. Really? My dad passed away six years ago, so I can tell the story now. Okay. So, when I was like 10, mm -hmm. myself and my brother and the local minister's kid, ironically, okay. Phil Evenhouse, if you're out there, leave a comment. Okay. Um, we Phil, we took some of my dad's cigarettes, which were like Belvedere, like super strong cigarettes. Mm -hmm. We were like we were like little kids, and then we would go to this guy. Phil had this little Ford outside of his house, mm -hmm. and we would like. Phil we, is such a bad influence. I know, I know. And so we would smoke cigarettes, but we didn't inhale. Like we didn't know how yeah, to smoke. Sure. We, but it's still, it's just not good. Like when you're a kid, it's like, hey, don't do that. Like, well, I'm probably gonna try to do it now. I think I'd like you to draw a clock for me <laughs> right now. That's right. Well, we used to take get firecrackers, but we never really. Sure. Say, well, I didn't yeah. smoke when I was ten. Yeah. So. I know. I feel like I'm 90 years no. old. When I was a kid, yeah. I used to smoke two packs I learned something new about Brad every day, whether I want to or not. That's right. So the good news is, however, though, is that say you're a smoker for a long time. Studies show that if you quit, even at age 60, mm -hmm. within five to 10 years, you can reduce your risk by 50%. That's hope, right? It's worth it. Okay. So smoking is bad. Quitting smoking is good. We're just breaking it down to simple terms yeah, yeah. here. How do you quit? Well, okay, What's first, the best way to quit smoking? Yeah, let's acknowledge That's that. a whole video on its own. 100%. Quitting smoking is very, very difficult. With combined success rates, if you used every single thing that was available, success rates are like 30, maybe 35%. Like About really, the same as your risk of developing Alzheimer's when you... Right. So the, the main, I would say, the main successful treatment is what's called nicotine replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one. So mm -hmm. whether it's with gum or a patch or something to help your body deal with the withdrawal yeah. that you inevitably feel if you stop smoking acutely. So the thought being that you use nicotine from a patch reduces the kind of chemical side of the inhalational component. So it would reduce your risk of lung cancer. However, if you remain on these nicotine yes. replacement, you're still gonna have all the negative stuff of the nicotine. So even people that use patches, or even looked at some of the research, chewing tobacco, all these other delivery methods, still can have the negative side for dementia of the nicotine, that chronic stimulation. So versus nicotine I replacement. I think the idea is though, you do that temporarily because it'll be easier to bridge. get off the nicotine. Totally agree. And, and it's really a combination of things. One yes. method of trying to quit is probably not gonna work. So behavioral therapy, some yep. form of behavioral therapy is crucial as well, in addition to one of the nicotine replacement. And methods. behavioral therapy for all sorts of addictions really teaches you, hey, what are your triggers? What kind of increases the chances that you're gonna do this behavior that you're trying to stop? Yeah. And then strategies to deal with them or prevent them or reduce your exposure right. to them. Right, what's so, going on in your life that's making you want to do this? Right, and then number three would be medications. And there are some medications like uh, Wellbutrin mm -hmm. and Chantix and a bunch of other things. In and of their own, they're about 25% successful. Mm -hmm. But if you can add these other two, maybe you can get it to 35. And they actually say, too, the number of times that the average person tries to quit yeah. is between six and 30 times. So don't give up. So if you try to quit three times, you're like, I can't. I just can't. Go. No, you got Keep going. 27 more times to go. <laughs> which, is, which is unbelievable. It's a lot of tries. And it speaks to how addictive it is. And also, you know, this is why if we knew that it did this when it was first invented or yeah. found, yeah. it would be illegal. Yeah. But yeah. well, you kind of can't undo that part. If you're looking for a new hobby or pastime, don't make it smoking. 
because it is so hard to quit. Right. And with respect to dementia, they estimate that up to 14% of all dementia is caused by smoking. That's, That's a lot. lot. That's a lot of dementia. That's too much. <laughs> it's a modifiable risk factor. Yes. All right. There you have it, guys. So that was week four. Right. Okay. So now you know smoking, not only bad for you in many other ways, but also increases your risk of dementia and Alzheimer's. Quitting actually is very difficult, but if you can do it, it can get your risk back down to closer to normal. Ironically, I don't see a lot of people with dementia smoking. No, because when you see them, they're usually in the hospital and you're not allowed to smoke in the hospital. That's true. true. But even living in the community. Yeah. Now you know. There you go. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about your experience with smoking, quitting, dementia, all of the above. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.